Hey guys, my name is Shai. This is another yes or no pick a card reading. You got cards numbers one to five and then six to ten. Go ahead and pick your cards and then we'll get into each of them. Okay, card number one. Five of worlds. Yeah, this uh, the subtext on this card, these cards all have captions. If you can see up here, it says setback. So this is a no, although it is not necessarily that permanent of a no. <laughs> this is literally a setback, um, a problem that is going to come up and you might feel like you're going, you know, one step forward, two steps back. It's actually not as big of a deal as it seems. It's going to be a temporary problem. And I think if you wait and try again later, um, kind of once you feel the energy around this situation start to shift, that you can have another go at it and see <laughs> how it works out then. But definitely for now, this is a no, and there's going to be some kind of, you know, minor to medium-sized obstacle, nothing really serious, nothing major to worry about. But yeah, for now, you're facing a setback, so this is a no. Card number two. Nine of Crystals. You know, I was thinking about this card before I made the video. Um, I thought it was going to come up. This is definitely a no. The Nine of Crystals, this would be the Nine of Swords. And I know a lot of you know what that means. Um, in this deck, it is represented as narrowness. Um, kind of that narrowness of mind or even being narrow-minded. Um, that kind of creates anxiety and tunnel vision and a lot of unnecessary stress. You might feel like you are fixating on things or like stress cleaning even, just getting fixated, getting obsessive, um, getting unnecessarily worried. You might be having tension headaches. Like with this card, it's not a, as bad of a representation as the Nine of Swords typically is. So this isn't anything really huge, but in order to get out of this energy, you're going to have to try to relax and try to open your mind a little bit and try to open up, basically open up, open up in general. You're too closed off. You're too uh, fixated and too focused on something. Um, I mean, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. I got this card for myself the other day and I was definitely feeling it. So this is, this energy will pass, but for now, this is a no. And the general message here is to shift out of this energy. You want to focus on letting go and opening up. Card number three. Ah, Sensor, Woman of Wands. This is a yes. This would be the Queen of Wands. Uh, as you can see here, we got a black kitty cat. We got lots of fire imagery. This is you having a lot of power um, and you being able to manifest what you want. And with the Sensor, it, there's a certain amount of like a sensitivity coming in with you. And... I really think that with this card, you can use your sensitivity to help others. I noticed that with this particular representation of the Queen of Wands, when this card comes up, there's going to be people coming to you for like advice or for help. And if you can kind of enter into the teacher role, like not so much giving them a fish, but teach them how to fish for themselves, right? Um, resist the urge, I think, to be too much of a like helicopter parent type of thing instead of just giving people what they want try to help them help themselves essentially um this might not apl apply to everybody's situation but i always do see that uh when this card comes up so i know for some of you you're going to be kind of getting called upon for your advice or for your knowledge or for your wisdom or for your help and definitely do what you can but try to be more of a guide or a teacher rather than uh like a little helper type of person so Overall, really good card, good energy, um, lots of positive vibes coming in for you, and this is a yes. Card number four. Oh yeah, the Empress is definitely a yes. This is wonderful energy. <laughs> you can see we have this golden figure here with like the flower blooming around here, and we have a dove and a waterfall, and I don't know what red planet that is. I don't know if that's supposed to be a representation of Venus, maybe? 
mountain in the background. <laughs> this is you feeling abundant, you feeling like a divine goddess, you feeling completely powerful and completely comfortable in your surroundings. So many good things going on here, um, like a flow of creativity. If any of you are asking to do anything with children, um, I know a lot of people ask if they are pregnant <laughs> with these yes or no's. If you are pregnant, if you're thinking that you might be pregnant and you got the Empress card, I would go get a pregnancy test right now because the Empress is very fertile. Um, and it typically means like good things to do with children. But of course, if you're not looking for children right now, um, yeah, you know, don't, don't leave this at a tarot card. Definitely get a pregnancy test. Um, but anybody asking about a creative project, this is a really good sign, you know, that you get kind of giving birth to your brain child. So, you know, this fertility energy, this, um, kind of birthing energy isn't necessarily about, you know, babies and children. It can be your creative project and really bringing things into fulfillment. Really awesome card, super good energy. Definitely a yes. Card number five. Ooh, Achiever, Man of Worlds. This would be the King of Pentacles. <laughs> this is so cool. The subtext on this one, Achiever, says it all. This is you totally accomplishing whatever you're setting out to. This is a really good sign for basically anything, especially a career, um, anything to do with moving your physical house environment, anything to do with your family, anything to do with money. This is really awesome. We have depictions on here of, you know, everybody working hard and putting in the effort and then actually achieving their goals. And we also have Saturn on here. Um, at the time I'm filming this, Saturn just finished a retrograde cycle and is moving direct. So I'm really feeling that as a new burst of energy. So for me, Right now, this is also representing um, a new influx of energy that is going to be helping you uh, really propel yourself forward and get stuff done, especially things you've been procrastinating about or you've just been, if you've been feeling really tired lately, this is things going to shift. You're going to be feeling much more able to put yourself out there and to have confidence in yourself. So this is a yes and it's really high frequency. Card number six, Ten of Crystals. So that would be the Ten of Swords, but this representation is a bit different because the subtext up here is delusion, delusion. And there's just a lot of sharpness uh, in the imagery on this card, and it's a little bit bleak, and it, there's a little bit of despair going on here. So this is a no, and... I think it's trying to tell you that something is not as it seems. If you're thinking everything is going one way, um, there's actually something else entirely going on. Like you're going to have to lift the curtain and see who's behind it. If you're asking about somebody that you have some kind of interpersonal relationship with, um, this card is probably telling you that you have reasons to be suspicious. If you are asking about anything that you should do or anything that's going to happen to you in the future. This is really telling you that things are just not as they seem. You need to look a little closer. And I think that your emotions are misleading you on this one. So it is going to require really careful examination of the topic. And I would actually recommend with this to kind of if you can get a little bit of distance, get a little bit of space, it actually reminds me a lot. I've been playing a lot of Sudoku lately. And when I get stuck on the puzzle, I can sit there for five minutes trying to figure out, you know, the next number to go in and I won't be able to figure it out. But if I put my phone down and then come back to it an hour later, I find it right away. So I think that's that same energy here. Whatever you're trying to figure out, you need to take a break from it. Go do something else, distract yourself, uh, you know, get a breath of fresh air, clear your mind, then come back to it. And then I think you'll be able to see things more clearly. So Definitely a no. There's a bunch of confusion going on here. Um, but eventually I think you'll see, you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel, but, um, give it a little bit of time, I think, so you can clear your mind first. If you're trying to make a decision, definitely sleep on the decision for at least one night before you make your decision because things are not as they seem. Card number seven. Uh, the tower. This is a no. Um, with the tower, if you're asking 
simple, straightforward, yes or no question. It always means a no. However, there's always so much more going on with the tower. This is your tower moment. <laughs> if you've ever heard about the tower in tarot, then you know what I'm talking about. This is some mash, massive shift coming through into your life, and it can seem chaotic when this is coming through. It can be something like suddenly having to move or suddenly losing your job or some kind of catastrophe is sweeping in like a whirlwind. And I don't want to make anybody panic because the thing with a tower moment is they're only bad for a little while and they're only bad if you're really resisting it. If you can really lean into the shift and lean into the change and ride it out, then you can really see that this is clearing out the debris of your old life and going to be bringing something in. After the tower moment, we are always better off. We are always in a better place. It is like the tower moments come in when your life has been, been stagnant and stuck and you haven't been able to figure out how to shift things for yourself. Then the universe comes through and shifts it for you. So the tower moment is doing you a favor. You just might not realize that for a little while. Um, but you know, the only advice I can give for a tower moment is just try to navigate with, navigate it with as much like courage and with as much resiliency and with, and with as much, um, resourcefulness as you can. And that'll help you get through it quicker. And then you'll land on your feet and then you'll see how everything actually worked out for the best in the long run. So I actually love to see the tower. I think this is a great card, but yeah, for those basic yes or no questions, this is a no. <laughs> um, but welcome to your tower moment. There's way more going on here. Card number eight, four of wands, aspiration. This is a yes, but it's just telling you to be hopeful and to be inspired and to give things a try. This, you know, aspiration, it's not really a guarantee that everything is going to work out exactly as you planned, but it is definitely <laughs> encouraging you to take this chance, go down this road and see how it all works out. It's a really like a positive kind of childlike youthful energy I kind of get from this. And you're being encouraged to explore and to get curious. But with this card, don't be too attached about specific outcomes because things are probably going to surprise you and they're probably going to not work out the way you think. But I do think you're on the right path. You're on the right track. Go down that road, see where it takes you. I think it's going to be someplace good, maybe even better than you expect. But right now, just be curious and be open to the experience. Card number nine. Sage of Worlds, Master. This would normally be the Page of Pentacles, but as you can see, this is a much more um, mature energy since it is depicted as a sage and as the master. And I think this really focuses more on, if you're asking about career or money or creative projects, this is a really, really good sign that things are coming to fruition and that you have gained a lot of skill and expertise and recognition in your area. You know, you are the master, you are the sage. This is definitely you stepping into your own and getting comfortable with your own uh, power and your own skill. This is a time to be confident in yourself. And the only caveat here is that I feel like there's a little bit of a, of a reminder to not be too like closed off or too introverted and I'm a massive introvert and I love being an introvert and I think that's great but I think at some point we have to remember that we have all of these gifts to share with the world and with this card I think you're being invited to share whatever you have to share it doesn't mean you have to you know get on YouTube and it doesn't mean you have to go spend a lot of time with people but I think there is something you can do to share your gifts your skills your talents your expertise your knowledge your love whatever it is don't forget to share it because you have so much to give, so much to give. And the world uh, really needs what you have to give. And even if you think that your area is, you know, basically like filled up, <laughs> you know, you think, okay, I'm going to be a poet, but there's so many poets. The world doesn't need another poet, but there, 
nobody writes poetry the way you do or you know whatever it is that you do nobody does that thing the way you do so do it with as much authenticity as you can and that is how you make room for yourself the world always has space and there is always an audience for somebody who's doing something with complete authenticity so this is a yes and just shine on guys and please feel confident in sharing your gifts with the world card number 10 all right you guys got death and i really love the death card because it is always about transformation shifts and change so please keep that in mind when you are trying to figure out if this is a yes or no for your particular question this is absolutely signal signaling that everything is changing everything is going to be transformed one thing is going to end one door is going to close but another thing is going to begin another door is going to open so if you just want a basic yes or no for some kind of basic question this would be a no you know because it's death but this is not the final ending of your story this is not the final death it is your transformation into something bigger bolder and more beautiful this is the butterfly coming out of the cocoon you know this is you returning to source after you leave your body although um it, what i do like to share with this card is that if you're asking about like health problems and I really kind of wish people wouldn't do that, but I know people are going to ask whatever they're going to ask and I can't do anything about it. So whatever. But if you're asking about health problems and you get the death card, don't freak out because I have personally drawn this for somebody who was, you know, very old and very sick. And I drew the death card for them and I thought, oh my God, this is going to be the time that the death card is literal. And I was like, that, that's it. They're, they're, gonna, they're done, right? They're going to transition. They're going to leave their bodies. Um, but it turns out that they didn't. They actually had a like miraculous cure and a miraculous return to health they transformed back into being a healthy person their their health problem just disappeared it was just like overnight the problem was solved it was amazing so this doesn't necessarily mean the death of the body it can mean the death of the problem and it can mean a transformation back to health so i just have to throw that out there because i know i get all kinds of questions <laughs> on these videos so You'll have to use a little bit of finesse in your own intuition on figuring this one out because this is a very complex card. Um, but for all of your basic questions, it'll be a no. And that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.